Are you getting Anybody kidnapped? Jeez, <laughs> Haley. Haley! Welcome back, I'm Julianne. I'm here to do my reaction video for season six, episode 17 of One Tree Hill. This time the title of the episode is You and Me and the Bottle Makes Three Tonight. And I am excited to watch a new episode of One Tree Hill, especially because if you're on Patreon, it has been a while since I haven't done a reaction video for One Tree Hill. So I'm kind of missing the show. Like I have even had like dreams about the show. So it's been crazy how much I've been missing this show. But if you're on YouTube, I mean, you do get the reactions in a different uh, pace. Uh, right now I am almost at the end of season three on YouTube and I'm on season six on Patreon. So it's like a very huge difference, you know? So yeah, uh, but I'm going to react to episode 17. I'm very excited for it. I don't know what to expect. But, you know, that's always a good thing uh, about One Tree Hill because, you know, it's always something different and excited, exciting. So, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, thank you to everyone who will watch this reaction. I hope you guys are enjoying this both on YouTube and on Patreon. So if you're on YouTube, you know what to do. Give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, and you can go to Patreon right now and watch the full extended version for this reaction and so much more. Uh, and if you want to do that, like... I always say the links in the description down below. And if you're on Patreon, give it a heart and continue supporting for more because I might be doing one more episode after this. We'll see how it goes. So stay tuned for that. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. hope you guys continue supporting for more. And yeah, for now, that's about it. Without further ado, let's just begin with season six, episode 17 of One Tree Hill. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, really, I promise. Did he put away his shooting? What the hell happened? I promise. I promise. Okay, you caught me a little off guard there. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is such a... I'm sorry, I freaked out. This is such a weird... As long as it doesn't happen again. Okay. You have my word, never again will I say the words, I love you. Oh! Oh! I was like, he put a finger somewhere that she doesn't like. <laughs> What the hell, Brooke? Okay, okay, yeah, you kind of you could freak out about that too, I guess. Uh, straight people are so confusing to me. Uh, but I really thought he like went in the wrong way. I think they were trying to imply that. Oh my god, that was hilarious. I thought they were implying that he was like his lip, some place that she didn't like. I guess she say, "I am a mother," you know, like. Okay, leave it to me to make things kinky, but I think they weren't aiming for that. Okay, don't toy with me. I am not a pervert. It's just that, you know, <laughs> I'm just gonna shut up and play. Even though I do in fact love you. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. Quit. That's so cute. <laughs> oh my God, but like someone who like, like says that to her. It, it, oh, Julianne, I love you. I love you too. I came to get my car, I'm driving it back. I thought the whole point in New York was that you didn't need a car. Yeah, but I've decided to stay on a more permanent basis. So, I guess this is goodbye for a while then. I think Actually, this is goodbye, it's goodbye forever. forever. Yeah. Uh, you are an idiot, I just want to say that now. I'm sorry, but I'm, si I'm taking my Maleficent sign. Weekend, so I just decided to bring home to you. <laughs> that's so cute. Happy anniversary, Nathan. It's your anniversary. Oh, the children. I love them so much. I love them so much. I love them so much. Are there any Funkos of them and like of One Tree Hill? Because I will buy one for Nathan, one for for. Um, Haley, one for my child Pey Peyton, one for my other child, my daughter, you know, Sophia, uh, Brooke, another one for Julian, 
I will also buy one for Maleficent. Oh, and Lucas too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. L Lucas too. He's good. <laughs> it's so cute. You guys are so cute. <sighs> oh, no. That was fast. Pizza's here. Oh, no. Hello, Deb. You're looking old. Fuck you. Grandpa Dan. Stop with this ass There's coming. my guy. Ugh. Ready to have your world rocked? Not so much. Oh, you got morning sickness again. Oh. Sure. Hey. Oh. Oh no. Wait. You okay? I don't think that's normal. She's okay, right? You're okay, right? Where's your belly? Okay, there's your belly. What's what's going on? Let's get you to bed. Like you said, this so is our cute. house now. It's beautiful. Why does she look like that? Did something happen? I love mommy and I love daddy. What is happening? I'm just gonna need a minute. What happened? Look at Scott. When I think about all the time, I thought maybe I didn't want a baby. Like I, like I couldn't handle it. Baby, what is baby going on? Look like that. The universe doesn't punish you for being afraid. Yeah. I know. What? I know. What's happening? But I can't do it. You can't the doctor. I know what he said. Oh, I know. She has cancer. And she has to have an abortion. Because it's either her life or the baby's life. <laughs> I don't know why I just thought. Because it happens in like dramatic Mexican telenovelas. That's why have I have this baby. Wait, wait, you what? Die. <gasps> I knew! I knew this! Oh my god! You listen to me, you're not taking pain away from me. You're not taking pain away from me, you're not taking this baby away from me. Okay. Listen! Oh my god, I'm so sorry, but like... <laughs> you can't do this to me! Why is it like always that baby's happy? You have to ruin it for her! Why do the writers hate her so much? Why do the writers hate me so much? They knew I was gonna be watching in the year 2020 and going through all of this. It's not fair! Peyton deserves to be happy! This is not... Listen to me. Everyone, listen to me. This is not fair. Let her be happy. Why don't you let her be happy for just like a second? Oh, God. Of course, her dramatic ass is going to choose having the baby. Isn't she? I hate my life right now. I hate my life right now. You could die. You could. She won, though. It doesn't matter. No, it d d d shut up! It does matter! I'm gonna have this baby. No, she will have the. It's not fair! The, the, the surprise! That was my surprise! I am very upset right now in this moment. I'm, I am very upset. Okay? And the episode started oh, like with a really cute song, and like now I'm like. I wanna punch someone! I had some pain early in the pregnancy. Yeah, it was a really weird pain. Why didn't you tell me that? Because we're making a movie. Because I didn't want you to worry, and they said it was nothing. Okay. This isn't nothing. Well, she did knew it was something, okay? What does that mean? Well, it means whatever happens, happens. You know, that is really selfish. Baby. This is our baby, all right? You you saw its heartbeat, you saw its little tiny fingers and its toes. Stop it! No, I'm not stop gonna it. stop it! I want you to think about it, okay? Then we'll try again, okay? Okay, well, I think gonna... I think both opinions are really valid right now. I understand the fear that 
he is experienced right now because he's like, I am going to lose the woman I love, you know? The love of my life, I'm gonna... Like, if I was like him, I, 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 I can understand his point of view. But also, I'm gonna take Peyton's side because as a woman, you don't... You really don't understand the connection that we have with the baby, you know? It's something growing inside of you, okay? So, of course you have a connection and you... You know what? I want to think about it for a few more seconds, you know? And sometimes we get really this, like, whole martyr type of thing when we're like, our lives don't matter. Well, some of us do, you know? Not all of it. Not all of us. But, you know? And, like, of course I understand where Peyton's coming from, where she's like, no, because she, she's, she's getting, like, really protective over the baby. You know? Because it's her baby. It's not a thing. She feels the baby inside of her, you know? So... <sighs> Why, why do, why is this happening, God? Stopped, okay. Gore crashes and bullet wounds and psychos. Yeah, you guys are straight. That's why you're really gonna survive. let some doctor lay odds on us? Well, I mean, it's not like he's studying for this, right? Peyton, stop it. <laughs> oh, God. And okay, even if something does happen to me, you're gonna be okay. And you can raise this baby on your own. Peyton, Peyton, shut up. Because I am not raising any grandchild without you. Okay? And every single moment that we've shared together has just been leading us here. For maybe you, you to, and I to are die? To create this life. Because maybe this life is going to change the world. I can't accept. How do I explain to you guys that I feel like crying, but I just can't? And also, I hate the babies talking like that, you know? And like, I, I hate the fact that there is this limp possibility that either, I don't think they're gonna kill Peyton, you know? I don't think they're gonna kill Peyton. But, you know, it really worries me that they actually are going to kill this child. And I don't like that. And, like, just imagine what it will do to them. You know? But, I mean, yes, there's always, you know, they can always adopt. But still, you know, I don't like this. That our story doesn't have a good ending. Our story already has the greatest ending. With you dying. You know God damn you, Lucas Scott, for writing the comment. This is, this is all because of that awful book. This is your punishment. I need to know we're making the right Okay, come, come, come here. Yeah. Sit down, sit down. Uh, I'll what? call an Amy. Wait. The baby kicked. <sighs> He's kicking hard. <sighs> Do you feel that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't care about that. Maybe he does now. Oh, sweetie. It is I think, okay for you to love and I think he just doesn't want to make it real. So it will make his decision of having an abortion a lot easier. Wait for what, Marvin? What else is there to say after goodbye? You know See you later? I, I mean... I had Lisek. I see 2020 now. Bitch, but Maleficent growing up. I, I wouldn't do that because I am afraid I'm going to go blind. But Maleficent going out there, getting her eyes checked. Bless a queen. Well, I guess it was a month first. Trust me, there's nothing you can say that I haven't said to myself a thousand times. Well, maybe there's one thing. I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't see you before coming. For, for driving you away? Okay. I'm doing this because you're the one who deserves to be angry. And you need to know that you didn't screw this up. I did. Okay. <laughs> so you're telling me that I was right the whole time. You know, that my girl left the send, you know, she just acted because you acted out because you were the the bad one. I mean, we being new and the fact that you need to I don't know why I'm this upset with mouth. But I am. But the fact is that I knew this. Because I love Maleficent so much. I miss knowing that my day was going to start with you. 
knowing that I was gonna come home to the one person who really got me. I miss the fact that around 2.30 every morning you snore for exactly seven minutes. <laughs> That's weird. I do not. I have to forgive myself and I can't do that if I'm seeing you every day. Are they coming back to go or not? I have to go. Aww. Maleficent is very determined. I love that about her. If she decides to stay... I'm sorry. I think this is good for her. She wants to move forward. You are in the past. See what got you? Being a horny boy for Gigi. You lost a little queen. To seven years. Oh, seven years they've been together for seven years. Like, I know we're having like a very stressful like situation right now going on with uh, Lucas and Peyton. But just seeing Maylee, it just brings so much joy to my life. I really didn't care that much about the Millicent, uh, you know, Maleficent mouth thing. But I care about Daily so much. Just seven years. Seven years. I can't believe you talked me into marrying you when I was 16. I don't know what the hell was I thinking? That's like Jamie bringing home a wife in 10 years. Stop it. That's so not gonna happen. We'd totally be hypocrites. Yeah, That's true. That's true. Yeah. It was incredible and important and maybe a little PG-13. And Principal Rimkus told me I couldn't publish it in the school paper. So she So of course you did. Yeah. Yeah. It is Haley. Very mad. Yeah, Principal Buttkiss. <laughs> it's very original. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways. They are so cute. I just want to say that it's so cute. Like he's making like high school jokes and I'm like, I'm so proud of my boy for making that up. So proud. He suspended me. Oh, he has a piano. This could be my music studio. Oh, it's and so cute. it happens to overlook the driveway with a basketball hoop. Oh. <laughs> so whenever I need inspiration, I can watch you play shirtless. Preferably. I mean, you've just got yeah. this all figured out, don't you? Well, I'm just dreaming. You should get back on the road. Aww. Yeah, like that's ever gonna happen. It could yeah. happen. He has school. Well, it's a good thing his mom is the world's greatest teacher. I mean... Whose specialty is tutoring Scott. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, true. Really? Oh. You tell me your wish wouldn't be to go back onto her. <sighs> it would. I knew it. That's Nathan, so cute. We would have totally separate lives. What would that mean for us? You guys are sex. Oh, <laughs> serious. This is our marriage. You can't take those kind of chances with marriage. I think when a marriage is this strong, you can take the chances. Will I miss them being together? Yes, of course. But I think they're strong enough to make it work. And that's how sure I am that Nayli is endgame and they can go through everything. And they will come out stronger at the end. Am I right? Oh, no. Come on. I'm right. I'm right. You gotta play defense. I couldn't live with myself knowing that my dream kept you from pursuing yours. You're so amazing. Yeah, he really yeah. loves you. I know. You, you get lucky. <laughs> think about it, Lynn. Yeah, I'll think about it. It's a, so, what do you so want amazing. An old house like this. There's too many rooms. <laughs> you forgot how much fun we're gonna have filling them up with kids. Oh, oh really? All these oh, rooms? That is <laughs> <laughs> this is so adorable! Oh! <laughs> He's so cute! But this is all wrong. I never dated him. I never even met him. Well, yeah, I would have dated her, but no. <laughs> Bisexual Brooke Davis. I am here for it. Bitch! Woman Farrell, nice. I didn't have time for love, okay? And even if I had, Victoria would have never allowed it, so there it is. So then the last time you were in love. It was with Lucas. Now I get it. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Where are you going? If you have more than one copy of Lucas's book, I'm out of here. 
Look, I'm sorry if it's weird for you. I fucking love Julie. <laughs> because Faith used to have a look. <laughs> I think if he has, if she has to comment, I think you're safe, boy, because, you know, that shit didn't sell. No, I, she wouldn't have any of the comment here. <laughs> like this but that was really funny, though. It was really funny. I love Julian. <laughs> you still love him? No, you. No, I, mean, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's what Peyton said. Yeah, she's not Peyton. I'm the girl who's dating the guy who came to town in the first place to get Peyton back. Okay, not exactly true, but point taken. Yeah. Thank you. It sucks always being the footnote in someone else's love story. Yeah, but you can be like the main characters in your guys' love story. Oh, I get so romantic when I'm like, when I, oh, I even feel like this is like the beginning of Nailey, so I'm like, I'm so happy right now. I'm, I feel so bad that I'm so happy about this, knowing what Layton's going through. You know, it's I feel bad about it. Well, I was like, where's my hand? But I'm so, f but you know what? I'm not gonna feel guilty. Should, and I don't think I should. But like, it's so cute, it's so cute. Lucas and Peyton's story is all about romance and destiny and fate. But you're different. Um. Okay. Thanks. I don't but know. Davis writes her own story like you did with your career and yes, your company and with Sam. That's my girl. You choose your own path. Yes. Yes, she does. Yeah. But you can't choose who you love. You're right. You don't. But you choose whether or not you open your heart to love. That's very true. Thank you, Julian. How about, I love you too, Julian. Don't force it, though. This is all happening really fast. Yeah. What happened to just having fun? And, you know, it's not as simple for me. I have Sam to think about. Don't do that. What? Yeah. Don't hide behind Sam. I'm not yeah. hiding. Yes, you are. You, you, you kind of what are, I think? sweetie. I think you do love me. Aww. Or you could love me. But you're just too stubborn and scared to admit it because the last time you really gave your heart to someone, it got broken. Well, that's true. I get true. that. But somewhere along the line, you gave up on the idea that you deserve to feel this way again. Yeah. Oh, I think he's the one but who's gonna you make don't you see feel what it. I see, Brooke. You deserve this. Yes, she does. She does deserve this. Julian. If he continues behaving like this, I am going to adore him. I mean, I already kind of do, you know, if I'm being honest. <sighs> but it feels so good to have this type of, like, love for my girl because Brooke deserves all the love and all the happiness in the world. So, I'm going to try one more time. I love you. Don't try to force it out, though. I'm in love with you. Yesterday. It's so I'm cute. so lost completely in love with you. I have been ever since I saw you doing that ridiculous Molly Ringwald dance. <laughs> I care about you so much. I don't think you should force it, you know? It's okay for now. Julian, come on. This has happened really fast. You know what? It's okay someday you let someone in. Today's just not that day. But it could be you. I don't it will want this be to change you. anything. You overwhelmed me a little bit. It's too soon. It's okay to feel it like that. Too soon. Yeah, I know. You know, you know, it's okay for him to feel this way. Who wouldn't fall in love with Brooke Davis? Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? You know, so I totally get it, Julian. But also give her time, you know, just give her a little bit of time. She has gone through a lot in the past, you know, few months and years. Just give her a little bit of time. Please. In fact, in the movie business, we do it all the time. It's called a deleted scene. Oh, Go pull yourself together, Brooke Davis. You look a mess. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you, bitch! Stop it! I love him so much. This is so, why are you so romantic? I hate this. I love it, actually. Why are you this romantic, 
Julianne. I was not ready to like fall in love with another character in this show. I am so sorry. Oh god, I wanna hug him. Why'd you and Annie Deb stop being married? Ah, oh, because your grandpa was a bitch. I mean, I'm sorry. We cannot say that. Well, gee, man. Life's like a long race. And some couples are meant to go the whole distance, and some are only meant to go halfway. Do you still love each other? No. We tolerate each other. Don't lie to the kid. Time for you to hit the hay. We were supposed to be this couple. Tucking our grandkids in together. But you are, though. You don't need to be Nobody together. Nobody sets out to have a failed marriage, Deb. It ends with a million little mistakes. Especially made by him. Well, also by her, by the fact that, you know, she tried to set him on fire. So, maybe that has something to do with all of this, too. Oh, Keith, hello. Look at them hugging. Who will have thought that that bitch will kill him? So and in a single moment of hatred, I made the greatest mistake of my life. Yeah. But yeah. I did it because I thought I was getting revenge. Yeah, Dan. Don't put the blame onto her. You know, because even if you thought it was Keith, the one who, who murdered you, he had an alibi, you know, the fact that he bought the same whiskey is not like, like, you know, proof of anything. You could not take justice in your own hands. Okay, that was your brother. You could at least give him the benefit of the doubt. But you just couldn't take the fact that he was happy and you weren't. Okay, so don't even tell me, okay? I think my my country just scored a goal because that's my brother screaming. Anyways. But still, I don't like the fact that he's putting the blame on 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 the fact that, you know, Deb tried to kill him and he thought it was Keith and that's why he killed him. No, you could not have done that as well, you know? You are just a terrible person, Dan. Just saying that. Hold on. I pulled the trigger. But you loaded the gun. No. No. This is entirely your fault. Entirely your fault, Dan. Entirely. Entirely your fault. Think. I, I mean, I mean, I mean. To be fair, like, to be fair, yes, she does deserve to go to jail for trying to kill him. Okay? To be fair. Because you don't do that. Okay? But if we also want to go back, he also should have done time for, like, psychologically torturing her all those years. So, thought about that every day for the past five years. And that's why I hate you. I hate you for killing Keith, and I hate you for the guilt I feel. Yeah. Because she's it's an actual... you're gonna die soon. Uh, uh, because she actually, you know, has remorse. Unlike you, Dan Scott. Dan. It makes me believe in justice. I don't think he's gonna do Now though. get the hell out. Grandpa. It's time for you to get better. God damn it. The world looks in a mysterious way. He can still die in the operating ta table though. It's not. Don't worry about that. Okay. Really, don't I think worry I've about that. Pretty presentable. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'll be right there. Come over when you're done. You can still have dessert. I'll probably just crash at the hotel. But oh. I'll see you tomorrow. You look beautiful, Brooke. I hate that. But it's his insecurities as well. Someday. No, it will happen. Don't be like that, you know. I hate that she's, you know, I hate that she's been like this because, like, I feel like she kind of have this, you know, expectations and, like, she wants to be there, like, fully be there with him. But then, you know, she holds back. Oh. It'll be okay. What if it's not? I don't like the way she's talking. I will be. I'm doing this. Oh, I'm yeah. having this baby. No. We 
are having this baby. We are having this baby. Damn it. Okay, guys, so that was the end of season six, episode 17 of One Tree Hill. And this episode was very much center uh, in the couples of the show, uh, including Maleficent and, Mil- and, and Mouth, which if it wasn't for Maleficent, I wouldn't really care that much about them because it has been like a few episodes without them. And they did break up, so having them back to say kind of the same things, it was kind of like, what's the point of all of this? So the least interesting couple was Maleficent and Mouth. Rescued by the fact that Maleficent was back, and I love her, so that's the only good thing. But other than that, I was like, you know, not feeling, because I felt that it was a little bit repetitive, you know? Uh, unlike the other couples who are, you know, moving uh, forward with their relationship, whether if it's a good thing or a bad thing, they're presenting with a new problem, you know. Um, but the thing is here that I really didn't, like, enjoy it that much because Mouth has been a really bad boyfriend lately, you know. He hasn't cheated on her It's not like Maleficent cheated on him either. But the thing is that um, this whole thing about uh, her saving herself for the one and like thinking that it might be Mouth and then, you know, the fact that she wanted to have sex with him but then she thought it was going to ruin things, you know. Like I said, it's very repetitive, you know. But the thing is that at the end of the day, you know... Her virginity, and I do feel about like bad about her because you know it meant something for her. I don't care that Mouth didn't get, you know, didn't get to have her for the first time. I don't really care about that because I don't think it's any of Mouth's business. I feel bad because she is the one who regrets it, you know, and I don't, I don't like that for her, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the relationship really got screwed up, you know, because he never put like a, a, a clear line with Gigi, you know, the minute that the flirting started to be very much sexual harassment in the workplace, he should have said, you know what, Gigi, you're amazing. We are friends, but you cannot take advantage of our friendship and that's it you're not going to be working here anymore. But he didn't do that, you know. He didn't do that. He just let her play just and just, like, you know, playing in that insecurity, um, Maleficent, you know. So I, f- I kind of feel like, I mean, we already discussed this, so it's like, what's the point, you know. But I do think that she made a good decision, you know, um, because she needed to go. I think that she needed to move forward. And I think that was important, you know, for, for, uh, for her, for Maleficent, you know. Mouth, you know, on the other hand, it's not like I care that much. Anyways, then we have, you know, the Dan Deb situation. Another broken, um, couple that didn't get to the finish line, you know, as Dan said. But the thing is, with Dan, is that, you know, he was putting the blame of what happened onto Deb. He he takes the responsibility, I pulled the trigger, but you loaded the gun. And I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. Of course, a lot of the actions that happened build out to that moment. But the hatred that he had for his brother didn't only came... Because he cheated, uh, like he slept with Deb. He didn't come only from that or because he thought that he tried to kill him because of the whole... You did a lot of terrible things, you know, to him as well. And you measure him with the same, you know, rule that everybody measures you then. Which that you are a terrible person, you deserve to die. And he did that. He didn't give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm not gonna, like, sit here and say that I was the biggest, you know... 
Keith fan because I wasn't for a long time. I thought he was boring. And then the minute I started liking him, he dies, you know? Um, but the thing is here is that um, it wasn't really his fault, you know? And it wasn't like, you know, he should have taken, you know, revenge in his own hands. You know, the responsibility at the end of the day is entirely Dan's. You know, and he says, I did my time. If he thinks that doing the five years, whatever time that he spent in prison, it's enough for the damage that he caused, I don't think we can do anything about it. But it tells you a lot about the character, you know? It tells you that this is still the same Dan. Even though he's cute Grandpa Dan, he's still the same guy, you know, down, like, underneath the cute act, he's still the same despicable guy who killed his brother, you know? And we cannot, I don't think we can and we shouldn't forget about that, you know, ultimately. Because I have been, like, throughout this season, I have been ups and downs because he's been really sweet with Jamie. But how can you not be sweet with this child who, like, uh, and especially for Dan, who is like a... a, 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 a blank book where he can write who he wants to be in his eyes you know so it's like his second chance you know but um to be honest he can he can never do that his past will catch up with him and will his good deeds and like the fact that he bought a few ice creams will make it worth you know i don't i don't know because he also took lily's dad from Lily, you know, from Keith's daughter. Keith never got to see his daughter. You know, he, he will never get to see Lucas getting married uh, and live a life with Karen. Like, he will never be able to do that. All of that was taken away from Dan. So five years? If he believes that five years is enough time to pay for what he did? I don't know, man. I just think that in this episode... You know, the, the Dan who murdered Keith came out and is as despicable as he was, as he always was, you know? Yes, I understand. She did a lot of terrible things. He did a lot of terrible things. and Everything piled up to that moment. But he was the one who made the decision to pull the trigger. So the responsibility is entirely his. You know, the fact that Deb feels guilty, of course, because, you know, deep down she's a good person, you know. Uh, but, you know, it's not, it really isn't, like, um, um, really her responsibility, you know. Because if he will have said, if she will have said, oh, it was me, he will have killed Deb. At the end of the day, he will have still murdered someone. I don't believe the, the end for him will have been any different. You know, Deb will be dead or Keith will be dead or someone will be dead because he needed to fulfill that revenge because he, he, he needed, he had that necessity, you know? But anyways, um, but that another failed relationship. Um, then we have Brooke and Julian, which is a relationship that is just starting and I love the fact that it starts very weird and also implying that they did something, you know, crazy in bed. But it turns out that he just said he loves her, you know, and of course, uh, Brooke freaked out. And it's funny also that I say, of course. Why do I say, of course, she freaked out? Because we know how much Brooke has suffered throughout the seasons and you know especially in terms of her relationships she has suffered because she doesn't trust that uh she could have a, a, a partner who will respect her and love her the same way lucas loves Peyton, or the same way you know um nathan loves Haley. you know uh all these things like it's it's like she doesn't believe she deserves it. She doesn't believe she's going to be able to get there. So she doesn't expect it, you know? So the minute he says that, she freaks out, you know? And I think that it's okay that uh, 
that he says what he feels because I don't want him to be like, no, uh, like repressing what he feels for her. I'm glad that he was able to, you know, openly say that he loves her. But the thing is that he shouldn't force the I love you from Brooke. Whether if he believes that Brooke already loves him or not, he shouldn't force that onto her right now, you know? Uh, or in any situation, at any point, you know, you give your love truly, you know, if you love someone, you give it without really asking for anything. Of course, it's, it's wonderful to be loved back, you know? And it feels terrible if you find someone who, you know, doesn't love you back. But to me, I think that it's important also that he recognizes that there is a problem, you know, that there is issues with her. And that if he really loves her, he needs to wait, you know, for the right time. But you see these two very broken characters who come from, like, both of them are at the other ends of Brooke, I mean, of Peyton and Lucas's love, you know, that faith and kind of like destiny type of love. And they both are on the other side, you know? So Brooke got her heart broken. He got his heart broken. He is unsure whether if, you know, the shadow of Lucas Scott will do the same thing it did for his previous relationship. Now it will do the same with Brooke. And Brooke is like, will this guy do the same thing Lucas did when he broke my heart? Because he was also in love with Peyton, you know? So it's very much like they both have, like, they are very insecure. And I think, you know, it's okay to have this two really wonderful characters being at this point. So they can, I really believe they can work things out to finally meet in the middle and to be an amazing couple. I do feel that that is going to happen. I don't know that that's going to happen, but I feel that that's that's where it's leading, you know? So I understand that he at the end freaked out because, I mean, Brooke is freaking out as well for the I love you. And he's freaking out because, you know, will the shadow of him take me away from her again and, like, break me again, broke break my heart again? Will it? Wouldn't, you know? So, of course, it's there, you know, in the air, you know? So I, I completely understand it, but... It honestly makes for such a good dynamic, you know, because it's just, I feel like it's so wonderful, you know, because I haven't felt this way since, like, Naily at the beginning of Naily, because Naily's on a whole new level right now, you know, with their own set of issues and, like, not really, like, problems, but, like, facing new challenges, you know, and it's okay, but they have been through, like, a lot and at the beginning, they were like, I scream and I cry and all of it. And like, you know, I understand that um, um, I like the fact that I have a couple now that is kind of the beginning again and falling in love with it again. It's like amazing, you know, uh, but I have really have high hopes that he will be they will be OK, you know. Um, so, yeah, uh, it was a really beautiful uh, talk. Um, then we have Nathan and Haley. It's just like I said, they are in a different uh, moment in their relationship, you know? Um, one where, you know, um, Haley is like ready to give up her life in Tree Hill and go follow his, uh, her husband and like live through his dream a bit. But it's so wonderful that, you know, Nathan is so sure of his love for Naley and for Naley, I mean, for Haley. And, you know, he's so sure of their relationship that he's like, like, do the, the, the tour, like tour again, do that, like do what you're passionate about and that will be OK, you know, and it's so beautiful. It really is so beautiful and so pure. And to see Naily achieve this level of trust and like, it's just so amazing. You know, it gives you hope that, you know, if like Naily can go through everything and you like, they still be at the end of the day, like the most amazing couple on this show. Like, it's just amazing. Like what, what else can I say about them that I haven't said? A million times already throughout the entire six seasons. I don't think there's anything else to say, you know, because 
I just love them so much. They are just, they are, they are the definition of a couple being perfect for each other. They are. Like, if you want to look in the dictionary what, like, a couple in, what a, in love, what love is, you will find a picture of daily. I'm sure of it. And if it's not, they should add it, you know, because it's just, you know, and like, it was so beautiful and that she was like thinking about, oh, writing music, you know, I watch you play and like we fill this house with kids and everything. And I think they can do it, you know, they will. And, and even if Haley tours or anything, you know, there will be a point in their life where they will settle down or maybe not if she becomes like super popular or something. But like, it's still, whatever it is, they will be happy. I believe that, you know? So, it's so cute. It's so cute. So, now, getting to the... Um, before we do Layton, I like the way they did the episode, which was, like, chapters, you know, where they focus on each couple. I like that. I liked it. It didn't... It very... It seemed very... Um, very well structured. Because I think we needed those moments where it was a 10 or 8 minute scene with a single couple without cutting back to the other one and coming back and cutting back and cutting back. I think they won a lot with like doing like just, you know, the individual stories for every single couple. I think it was really well done. But now we go to the most important thing on this episode, I think, you know, other than the love and the hatred and the ups and downs of every single couple uh, that we have seen this time is with Layton. Because apparently they hate Peyton and they hate Layton in the sense of like they are happy about to have a child and turns out it looks like Peyton can have the baby because something is wrong with the baby and something is wrong with Peyton. Because at first, Lucas says that, oh, I could lose you. There is the possibility that we might lose Peyton. I don't believe we will. I really don't believe we will. But there is a possibility that that could happen. But what I am afraid of is that they will make her lose the baby. You know, or that it will be so dramatic, but at the end, you know, the baby's going to be saved or something. But something is wrong with both of them. And like Lucas saying to her, you know, that um, either way we might lose it. Like there's a higher possibility that they lose the baby than Peyton dying. But it's still like, it's like you have one of the worst situations with another awful situation. It's like pick one. And it's really not a, like an easy decision. I do understand Peyton, though. Uh, as a mother, I do understand her. I, you know, it's not an easy decision. It's not like I'm going to say, oh, you, you know what? I don't get rid of it. It's not like that, you know. It's it's so difficult to do something like that, to decide something like that. Um, and it's not as easy as, oh, I'm going to lose you or something like that. We mothers, sometimes we like to be like this martyr thing, you know. And also, it's because we are... It's something, and I'm not trying to, you know, just disregard the connection fathers and, and, and kids have. You know, fathers and children, right? Child. Father and child have. I don't want to disregard any of that in the connection that they had, in the bond they have. But you cannot deny that the bond in the, re in the relationship and the connection a mother has to a child, it's very strong. Okay, yes, the father gets to see the, be the belly growing and, you know, imagining the baby. But you feel it inside of you. Like, when the baby kicks, it's something so marvelous. The fact that you're giving life, especially when this baby was conceived with love, you know? So, of course, you love this baby. Of course, Peyton loves this baby. And it's a difficult situation, you know? And I honestly... I don't know what I will do in her situation. I think I will decide the same thing. I'm not in her position, so I'm not going to go ahead and say, oh, no, you know, I will do this and that. But 
I think it's understandable. It's also understandable why Lucas is so scared. And, you know, he did say a really, a couple of really bad things that I'm really not okay with. And he was like, yeah, look what you turn now, with, you know, not having a mother. And, like, I took that really harshly, you know. I don't know how Peyton didn't slap the hell out of him at that moment or say shut the fuck up. But, you know, she didn't. She's a better person than I am. But the thing is that still, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, he needs to understand that if it's difficult for him, it's a t like it's ten times more difficult for Baden because the baby is growing, a life is growing inside of her, you know. So it's different, you know. It's 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 a little bit different, you know. Um, it's a, it's bit it's like really really different different. Anyways, but the thing is that uh, he's scared. He says a lot of really bad things, in my opinion. Um, but Peyton remains throughout the episode very sure of her decision, which is having the baby no matter what. And even if I die, you're going to be okay. You're going to raise this kid in a, in a good way. And, like, let's not be tragic, Peyton, because, uh, you know, your mom died, your other mom died. It's like, it's not like you have, like, really good odds of surviving right now. So, calm down. Uh, so... I'm really scared for Peyton, okay? But I understand, like I said, where she comes from. But I was trying to say something else. Which was... I don't remember. Um, I was going somewhere with... See? Sometimes I rant and then I stop in the middle of my rant to rant about something else. And then I don't remember where it is that I came from. It's a really <laughs> stupid thing, but it happens sometimes to me. Um... But the thing is that with Baden, I feel always very scared. Because, I mean, she's the one who had this stalker. She, she, you know, even though she's not a lesbian, she got randomly shot. You know, it's... She's been through a lot, you know. Um, but I, I just don't... Honestly, I don't believe that she's gonna die. Like... Maybe that's the reason why, you know, this episode hasn't brought me to tears, those moments. It's just that I firmly believe that she's not going to die. Though, I do believe that they might take the baby away from her. You know, I do believe that it might be a miscarriage or something like that. You know? But, I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, so Layton's going through a lot. You know, they didn't necessarily say that she has cancer or something like that. But maybe it's just a, a risky pregnancy, you know? Um, but we'll see what else will, will happen uh, with, with, with all of that. It makes me feel really sad, though. It's, I mean, I wouldn't wish that to anyone. It's really sad. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. I know I ranted a lot. I know that I, you know, paused the episode way too many times. But I hope you guys still like my reaction. <laughs> um, but anyways... For now, that's about it. I hope you liked it. I hope you continue supporting for more. Give it a lot of thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. And you can go to Patreon right now and watch the full extended version for this reaction and so much more. Uh, thank you so much to everyone on Patreon. If you are on Patreon, give it a heart. Continue supporting for more. And I may, maybe post another episode. Maybe after I have dinner. Maybe. I don't know. How much would you like another episode? Just let me know. Am I, I might do it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for now, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys continue to support for more. And that's about it for now. I'll see you guys next time for more reaction videos for One Tree Hill. Mwah. Bye, guys.